It's Nolan. Yeah, justifiable belief in myself Overconfidence can turn into the means of my wealth Saying peace to timidity, years of humility A-town legend full of heat like humidity Walk at the academy, I'm adjust the position Adjust my position, I need to be first ranked National holiday on my birthday Saving up to save my homies lives like it's Earth Day Frying up that skirt steak Focused on feeding and buying the block Protect the services, banana supply and the glock Too much testosterone lead to skull and bones That your son is grown So much sooner seems the innocence is Come and gone. Money rolls stitched together like it's paper towels. Rappers taking vows at my feet like they making vows. Phew, get on my face and find a partner. I'ma put that nine nigga chest like Ryan Harper. Lion hearted, trying to find me a divine goddess. By the business and relax like she baddie bonnets. Living life, take a chance like we playing dice. Going blind to the block like I'm Maddie Ice. Dominican market, everything is for sale. My homies got a street education like it was jail. I excel like a spreadsheet, I was made to prevail. I'm switching up my flavors from fried chicken. Chicken to kill, freedom fighter with an ink pen, let it sink in. Take delinquents from the precinct and let them see ends. Embrace the data, teach them how the industry enslaving rappers. Lead the game, raise your statues like ancient magic. Start a label, pay the tax, then you make it back. Same concept that we're brick and mortar. We used to be mad and walkers before we was living dormant. Inventors with stolen visions, the history is important. I ain't got time for no top five. My homie hit my phone saying how the stocks rise. And we ain't talking about investing in no pop buys. I see my pop size lighting up a second chance. Is no longer reprimand. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. Got a good show lined up for y'all here. We're going to be talking about Megan the Stallion and her new Billboard cover interview that is now out. As a matter of fact, cover story, hip hop, RB, all that good stuff, man. Um, in this interview, she speaks on quite a few things. She talks about her career as it stands now, the Megan album, of course. Um, we get a little bit of input from Glorilla. Y'all better keep an eye on that one. She talks briefly about, um, Nicki Minaj. I know a lot of people out there, you know, it's been a, it's been a thing to watch all year to see what the next part of the saga is between Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj. If there's going to be indeed a round two or if they're going to keep shading each other, throwing shots musically, whatever the case may be, or if there will be some form of reconciliation. In that interview, she says, uh, I don't know what to fucking <laughs> reconcile because I don't know what the real problem is. And that's the question I've been trying to figure out. For a while now. Um, so all of those things get addressed in the interview with additional um, subjects as well. All right. So let's get into this story and just kind of address it from top to bottom. I guess we'll just go through the whole thing. Well, not the whole thing, but the majority of the thing. Right. So. They say Megan Thee Stallion on Kamala Harris going indie and why female rappers are harder than the boys. On her third album, she proves why she's still one of the hardest MCs in the games. In the game, excuse me. But she insists she hasn't even reached her peak yet. Now, again, I'm going to skip around in this to the most vital parts of the interview because I don't want to go through the entire thing. But just ride with me, okay? So, let's sit and see. Released in June, Megan debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 with 64,000 equivalent album units in the United States, according to Luminant, making it the biggest debut for any rap album released by a woman in 2024. She's still the top released um, female rap album of the year. So, love it, hate it, whatever. However you stand on it, it's still the most well-received album of the year. Um, So, have have fun with that. And I know some people out there will. Okay. Megan also topped Billboard's top 
R&B hip hop albums chart for the second time in her career, the sixth female rapper to do so on Megan. The Houston MC's word, world of bruising Southern rap and rump shaking anthems is alive and well, as is her deep and abiding love for Japanese culture. Otaku Hot Girl samples the popular anime series Jujutsu Kaisen while she performs alongside Japanese rapper Yuki Chiba on Mamushi. After the latter track broke out on TikTok, bolstered by Megan creating and demonstrating the song's dance in a Sailor Moon inspired outfit, she shot its video in her second home japan megan says when i'm out there i always feel happy the air is clear the people are polite the food is good the culture is so interesting to me i learn something every time i go out there i learn a little bit of japanese every time i go the shopping is good it just feels super positive every time i'm there i really like being there because i'm big on energy as soon as i touch down i always feel like i can take a breath everybody good all right Let's see here. They say, though Megan can be an aggressive rhymer, she knows how to calm things down and keep it sexy too, like on the Magic City Ready Anthem Spin featuring Victoria Monet. Um, this here is a quote from Victoria saying she's a very confident and strong woman. Megan knows exactly who she is. She doesn't let people push her off her dot. There's a lot of respect there. Also, she makes great music that brings people together and makes them dance. You want to watch her shake something and learn to shake something because of her. She's inspiring. So that's one of the more beloved acts that are on the scene in 2024 as well. Miss Victoria Monet sharing her gleaming opinion about Megan Thee Stallion. And I think this is important because for whatever reason, when I said that Megan was a very likable person and that she had a very uh, radiant energy earlier, a couple about a week or so ago, I had some people saying, oh my God, you, you guys claim she's so likable. Yeah, she is. That's why people fuck with her. Maybe y'all should start looking in the mirror a little often and trying to see how likable you are. You know what I'm saying? What type of energy are you exuding? How many times do you take that those checks and balances on yourself. Because some of the stuff y'all say about these people is beyond me. Okay? Just gonna go there and stay there. Now, when it comes to people taking shots at Megan Thee Stallion, she says, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. If people feel like I'm somebody to aim at, then I must be pretty high up if you're reaching up at me. I must be some kind of competition that makes me feel good. That makes me feel like I could rap. Because if I wasn't this shit, y'all wouldn't be worried about me. Again, a very solid point. Right? Like, some of the, some of the things that, that get said are just asinine. People spend a lot of time so-called critiquing, really hating, really sitting around being stagnant, talking about shit that you claim you don't like. And then you say the wildest shit. They say, though Megan relishes competitive battle, she prefers championing her peers. Following the success of her first ever headlining tour this year's Hot Girl Summer, she reconnected with the run's opener and her new bestie Glorilla on Accent. Earlier this year, she scored a top 15 Hot 100 song with Glow's Wannabe and the sold out arena tour created a rock solid bond between the female MCs that sharpen their studio chemistry. Now they want to release a joint project together. So this is what we have. Now, there was once upon a time a talk between Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion about a joint project. It seems that that may have been put on the back burner. We now have talks of Glow and Megan taking that round. I'd actually be here for it. I think that's going to be five. They do it. Um, they, they're they both like young, turnt, um, popping shit and not giving a fuck with nobody really really has to say about it. I think that's going to be a very aggressive project. And, and when I say aggressive, I don't mean just on like some beat your ass shit, but just like aggressive in terms of like in your face, like authentically Southern, authentically black, authentically like them. I'm here for it. Uh, when asked about that, Glorilla says Megan is a real rapper and I'm also a real rapper. We actually be talking and coming with bars on some down South gangster shit. It would be some down South real turn, real rap shit. It's my first time reading this too. Um, I think that would be very fire. Megan says, I ain't going to say too much, but it feels like it's going to get done. So Megan also added a little two cents in there to say, I ain't going to say too much, but it could, we might actually make it happen. Right. So I think that's going to be fucking dope. They say, uh, while being the face of female rap, 
may sound enticing, it doesn't move Megan, who during her three month tour happily shared the spotlight with not only Glorilla, but also Cardi B and Lotto, who made guest appearances at the tours, New York and Atlanta stops, respectively. Right. She says, I got a lot of people trying to critique me and tell me what I am and what I'm not. I feel like I've proved myself over and over again. If there's a question, if Megan Thee Stallion can't rap, you need to go ahead and stop. Ask, quit asking that question. We know I can rap. That's a fact. She can. not If there's anybody that you think is better, that's cool. But to say she can't rap, I think that's a load of shit. Again, look in the mirror. Look at yourself. Address why you're unhappy, because. If we're going to say people can't rap, we got to look at the motherfuckers that really can't rap. You know what I'm saying? I'm going I'm to I'm put a pause on this goddamn article real quick. It's some people out here that should not be in a booth at all. It's some people that should be getting stone cold stunners every time they even think to put their face next to a mic. Megan Thee Stallion is not one of those people. If she's not your cup of tea, fine. Don't entertain her music. You know what I'm saying? Only process it when you absolutely have to. If you're out in the club, if you're out at a festival, if you're out having fun with your family or doing whatever you're doing, getting drinks at a goddamn bar and her shit come on and it's like, all right, it's tolerable. Then just take it that way. But to say she can't rap, you lying to yourself and you can't be trusted. I'm sorry. Now. They say, take me back to your concert at Madison Square Garden where you, Cardi B, and Glorilla shared that stage. She says, it was a little East Coast Southern sandwich we had going on. I was very happy. I genuinely love Cardi. I genuinely love Glow. In the industry, you really don't meet a lot of girls who want to see you be successful. You meet people, and I'm not just going to say girls, but you don't meet a lot of artists that want you to have success because they're scared sometimes it's going to take away from their success. Music is competition. Rap is a competition. But those two ladies, I feel like we all like to see each other good, do good things. We like to see each other win. Sharing the stage with people that want to see you do good and you want to see them do good, it felt very uplifting. It, I felt like we were feeding off each other. I felt like we helped each other. Being on stage with them made me feel good because I knew we were proud of each other. So this is just another moment showing y'all if don't nobody else fuck with Megan or if she don't fuck with nobody else, it seems that the majority of the ladies in hip hop have her back, whether that be Lotto, whether that be um, Flo Millie who came out, whether that be um, Cardi, Glow. These ladies are behind her. She's fucking with them. They fucking with her. I think that's dope. Anybody you feel is missing. It's too bad. Okay. Now, what I find interesting is they brought up Q-Tip. Now, some people may not know that Q-Tip is actually uh, one of the people that helped uh, Megan Thee Stallion very early in her career. He literally actually met her mother and was one of those people in the industry that was able to shake her hand, have conversations with Megan's mom and say, I got your daughter. You know what I'm saying? We going, we, we got her back. So they say in 2022, I spoke to Q-Tip about you and he said, people still haven't even seen her full artistry yet. They ask, is Megan the peak of that artistry? She says, I still feel like I have more to give. With this album, I wanted to show people my personal interests and thoughts. I wanted to touch on my love for all things anime, all things Southern, how much I like to have fun, and I wanted to be myself. I feel like I did that. A lot of people were expecting me to come on, come on this album talking one way, and I wanted to introduce myself, this version of myself that I am right now. Excuse me. Sometimes people listen to me with ears of, I don't like her, so I don't want to like it. That's what I just was addressing a few minutes ago. The more people sit with the album, the more and more they're like, okay, you know what? This shit is banging. Right? They ask her about the, uh, y'all do this shit for TikTok, bitch, I'm really hip hop line on Boa. She says nothing wrong with TikTok. TikTok is fun. It's for people to get on there and have fun. Show me what you're eating. Show me what you're, show me how you're dancing. Show me what you're doing. I feel like TikTok is happy. Um, they say, I say that because you're one of the biggest stars in the world. How do you still maintain that hip hop essence? She says, because I really like to rap. This is something that I think is missing from a lot of rappers out today. Not just women, but I'm talking about all of you sucker niggas. 
whoever you are. Okay? A lot of you motherfuckers don't really like to rap. Y'all niggas just like to get the fruits of the so-called labor that you putting in, which is why y'all be getting cut short. Or y'all careers be at this tremendous high and then motherfuckers lose interest in you because this ain't really where you wanted to be in the first place. Anyway, let's get back to the article. She says, because I really like to rap. Where I come from, people are really freestyling. That is a fucking fact out in Houston. You know, I mean, Lil Flip, the freestyle king, you know what I'm saying? Like, them niggas really do be freestyling. Sauce Walker is a great example. He can freestyle and rap all day. He gonna candy paint your ass, go grill, pimp, the whole shit. You're to death. She says, what I come from is hardcore rap, Southern rap. The one thing in my life that I knew I was really good at was rapping. I don't ever want to get away from that. I don't want to ever play with it. I don't ever want people to think I don't take it seriously. I'll be the rapper that is good for a bunch of verses and freestyles because that's what I like to do. I love that energy. I love that energy because you go, you, you're going to know I'm going to bar your ass up. Even if the bars ain't necessarily in the lane that you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? She has a lot of projects out and she's still out, you know, before this project, she dropped Megan Mondays, dropping freestyles. A lot of artists at a certain point in their career, after they've dropped, they first really bought two, three albums. Them niggas lose touch with dropping freestyles. Them niggas lose touch with dropping shit strictly for the fans. That's not necessarily like heavily monetized or, you know what I mean? Niggas really rap, come outside to rap to get paid. So... I think that's dope. Okay. Let's see where else I want to go. As it pertains to her label situation, they say you've said that your relationship with Warner Music Group is based on trust. How has the label proved its trustworthiness? She says they ain't told me no yet. They did exactly what they said they was going to do. Everybody that I work with there, we're on calls together all the time talking about how we feel we can make the partnership better. Everybody's been so cool and they're so easy to work with. Everybody's been super nice and I like nice people. They're just nice at Warner. They shouldn't be telling her no, no goddamn way because it's her shit. They say very few artists can say they got their masters before they turn 30. Why was that a priority for you? She says, I've been fighting for my freedom my whole rap career. I just couldn't take no for an answer. I don't ever want to be in a situation where somebody got their foot on my neck ever again. You got to do things to make yourself be your own boss. I respect it. They say, how has it been navigating that road as an independent artist? Being independent is hard, Megan says. When you got a label that does everything for you, all you got to do is wake up and be the celebrity. That's a very easy life. She says, I have to do shit other people aren't doing. I do work as my own label. I do fund a lot of my own things. There's a lot of things I'm still learning as I go. The shit is just not handed to me in my lap. I really got to figure out, okay, now I'm doing it by myself. Not that I'm doing it only by myself, but I'm in a position to be my own boss. So I got to figure out how to be the boss and how to be the employee. It's tough, but I like figuring it out. I like doing things on my own. I like working. I'm not going to stop. The more I know, the better I will get. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Like when you literally got to come out your pocket for the recording, the mixing, the mastering, you got to come out of pocket for the artwork the music video, the wardrobe, the lighting, the cameras, the action. <laughs> hey, man, when you got to come out of pocket for all of that shit on your own and you're still producing high quality shit, some of the higher quality shit that's been released this year, as a matter of fact, and niggas come out trying to downplay you, you can never downplay somebody that's fronting the bill. And executing at a high level. I don't give a fuck who you like. Put them in the same position where they have to be the one making the decisions, putting up the bread, putting up everything. Let's see if whoever you like is going to execute at that same level at what she's been producing since the end of last year. I don't think you're going to get too many replicas. I'm just going to keep it a buck. And that's being completely fair with everything. It's a lot of motherfuckers in the industry that leave the labels, go independent, and you start forgetting about who they are. You start forgetting about where they are. You start forgetting, you know what I mean? They might pop out and do a holiday special or some shit, and it's like, oh, damn, oh, there you are. Let's be real. Let's be honest. Okay. 
Let me see what else is in here. They say, uh, hey, here we go. They say, I think you started this competitive rap energy we've seen in 2024 when you released his. Do you feel you're the reason MCs are rapping competitively again? She says, I would like to think that I started things. I don't know. I just knew what I had to do and what I had to say. If it opened up the door for everyone else to get shit off their chest, well, I'm glad. Billboard says you took shots at Nicki Minaj. Is there a chance for a reconciliation or even another collaboration one day? The million dollar question, right? She says, I still to this day don't know what the problem is. I don't even know what could be reconciled because I, to this day, don't know what the problem is. So let's try to unpack that here. Because I've been trying to figure out what the fuck the problem is for quite some time. Okay. Earlier this year, Billboard decided to put out their own article talking about a, a timeline of Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion's friendship turned feud to try to get their own understanding and straightening on what the fuck went wrong. Right. So they say July 9th, excuse me, July 2019, Nicki Minaj agrees to hop on the song Hot Girl Summer. Right. They joined forces in August of 2019 alongside Ty Dolla Sign for their bubbly Hot Girl Summer anthem, which peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. Prior to the song, Meg first linked up with Nicki during an Instagram Live where they showered each other with love and the stallion revealed she'd been a barb since 2008. Right. So she came in showing love. Nikki explained that there were no plans for her to hop on the record, but she fell in love with it and got to writing that same night. Once I heard the song, I fell in love, wrote it before I went to sleep. This is what she said via Twitter. She said none of that was planned. I had no idea Meg was on live or that she would want to go live together. Right. So this is allegedly an impromptu session where they just linked up and the vibes got vibing. Right. August 2019, Nikki and Meg link up for Hot Girl Summer video. A couple weeks after their initial IG live, Nikki and Meg linked up for the video shoot where they also went live once again, but this time they were together on set. Rocking matching hair, the duo go back and forth about who was going to be driving the boat, right? We've seen the videos, we've seen that. Uh, the video went on to produce 133 million views, right? Nikki brought up this when she decided to do the whole Bigfoot meltdown and she talked about Megan allegedly offering her liquor when she was pregnant. There's been a lot of people out there that have, you know, attempted to debunk that and say she didn't even know or, you know, all that stuff. Right. Say it's a crock of shit. Um, but whatever, August, 2020. Megan Thee Stallion joins Cardi B for WAP. Nikki still shows love. So this is where things went a little bit. I think this is where shit got sticky. Right? Everybody knows that. So, of course, Meg teams up with Cardi for WAP August 2020. The raunchy collaboration made history as the first female rap collab to debut atop the Billboard Hot 100. So that motherfucker came in at number one. No contest, right? They say at the time, Nicki Minaj took the high road. She was quoted lending praise to Megan as a woman and an artist uh, in a variety feature talking about Megan, where she said, one of my favorite things about Megan is her desire to further her education. It's so important for women to feel inspired to achieve goals outside of social media, where the focus is usually placed on their bodies or who they're dating at the time. Women are more than just baby mamas, and we can continue to prove that by being goal oriented, bettering ourselves and being independent. Megan is the perfect example that we can have fun and be smart at the same time. Funny how the narrative changes. By November of that year, Megan was once again being asked about Nikki, where she says, I don't feel like I had to call her first. So they asked her how her relationship with Nikki is after doing the collab with Cardi. And she says, I don't feel like I had to call her. She says, I mean, at the at the end of the day, I'm still an artist and I should be free to work with whoever I want to work with. That is a motherfucking fact. If you're not signed to a, a, a nigga, if you didn't grow up with a nigga and if your genitals ain't touching, what the fuck do I care about who you work with? If I don't like a nigga, I'm just not going to be around their ass. That do what you do. I can't. <laughs> I can't. What? 
That's manipulation. Right? They say, uh, excuse me, Megan says, even me and Cardi's relationship furthered after the song. Like she's great on her own. I love her as a person. We talk often. We talk a lot. Me and Nikki, our relationship hasn't changed since we did Hot Girl Summer. She says, I feel like women, we really do know how to coexist and we really do know how to not be catty. So despite popular internet opinion, that's really not the case. So she was trying to uphold, you know, yo, I'm good with her and I'm good with her at the same time. She never threw Nikki under the bus. She was trying to make it seem like we don't got to be catty. We don't got to be enemies. We don't got to be at odds. We can make money. We can make records and everything can be fruitful. By January 2021, Nikki was plucking the fruit from the tree and smashing it. They say Nikki distanced herself from Megan as she reportedly hit the stallion with the unfollow button on Instagram via, uh, excuse me, circa January 2021. The savage rapper eventually returned to favor and the pair of hip hop titans still don't follow one another as of press time and don't expect that to change anytime soon. From there, later that year in May, They say Nikki subliminally dissed Megan on seeing green. All right. So this is the reissue of the beam me up Scotty mixtape, which I thought was interesting that she even did because I don't I don't know who was asking for it. But, you know, I'm not a barb. So perhaps they were the ones that were requesting it. Right. Um, So she re-released the mixtape on streaming services, May 2021. And on there, there was the song featuring herself, Wayne, and Drake, seeing green. They say fans now believe that the Queen's Alcoholics Bar was a jab at Megan Thee Stallion. One margarita pizza with Parmesan and garlic. These bitches thirsty. I can see why they alcoholic, she raps on the track. Interesting. And of course, that's a narrative that circulated around uh, Megan Thee Stallion for quite some time, especially after the incident with that other rapper, uh, the male one. I don't use his name. He's one of the people that's on the block list on the channel. It just is what it is. Um, you know, people started trying to make it seem like she was just a, a belligerent drunk that couldn't control herself and that she had found herself in a situation that she had created. I don't go by that narrative, but that's what a lot of people had pushed, right? By September 2022, Nikki subliminally shades Megan about allegedly forcing her to drink while pregnant. Here we are. They say, uh, Nikki is never afraid to spill some tea during episodes of queen radio. And she accused Megan the stallion of shoving alcohol down her throat, as well as allegedly suggesting she should get an aborted mission during a time she was trying to get pregnant. Make it, excuse me. Minaj would eventually give birth to her first son, Papa bear in 2020. She said, imagine telling someone you didn't want to drink because you were at the time possibly pregnant because you were actively having a baby. Imagine if that person said, oh, girl, you could go to the clinic. Nikki continued, imagine posting photos that you are pregnant and the person doesn't even like it or say congratulations. But then when you post that Beyonce sent you flowers congratulating you, the person then tried to send you flowers thinking that, oh, I can use this opportunity as she does everyone else. She'll post the flowers. I didn't even let them shits in the motherfucking house. So according to Nikki, she felt as though Megan wasn't supportive of her pregnancy. Was trying to get her to not go through with said pregnancy and only waited until Beyonce showed support that she decided to send flowers and congratulate her. That's her perspective of the situation. I won't discredit that, but I I don't know. Right. They say a fan alerted Megan of Nikki's claims and she put an end to the controversy by vehemently denying the allegations, which she labeled a lie on Twitter. And that was as of September 11th, 2022, almost two years to the date of, you know, what I mean, we we a week away from two years. Damn. March 2023, we get Red, Red Ruby to sleaze. And of course, there was 700 on them horses. We fixing the lead, but I don't fuck with horses since Christopher Reeves. We already knew what that was. Nikki also makes a reference to Doritos, which could stem from Meg's Super Bowl commercial campaign with the chip giant. She says Dorito bitches mad that they nachos. Which I still don't 
think was a dope bar. But we'll keep moving. There was also some fans out there that believed the 40 Cal and make them dance like a go-go was a jab at the Houston hottie in regards to her incident with that male rapper in 2020. And of course we get hiss as of January 26th earlier this year. So that's kind of the timeline of what's going down. And I believe Megan says she doesn't know the source of the issue because she doesn't feel like any of the information that's been placed out there is the root. Um, but let's just go ahead and assume the issue is Cardi B. You over there having fun with her. You did a song with me first. You're supposed to hold me down. Megan said, I want to work with both of y'all. I'm holding myself down. I had my own goals when I came into this music industry. I'm going to do what's best for me. It is what it is. Did none of y'all motherfuckers go to high school together? None of y'all went to middle school together? Did none of y'all go some Chuck E. Cheese eating some pizza together? None of y'all had y'all first drink together? None of y'all met each other when y'all had your first boyfriend and none of this shit? Yeah, I'm going to fucking navigate through the industry and be cool with you, 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 you get a friendship, you get a friendship, you get a friendship on some Oprah shit. What the fuck I care about what y'all got going on? And I shouldn't have to ask about what y'all got going on. Because I'm from Houston. Y'all, y'all got New York beef. I'm from Houston. What I got to do with that shit, man? So, yeah, what the fuck is the problem? We all know the problem, but it ain't worth acknowledging the problem because it's stupidity. It's foolishness. And only one side upholds that because we didn't hear about Cardi crashing out when when Megan came out and said, my, my relationship with Nikki is still the same. It's no beef. It's no problem. It's no cattiness there. She was trying to cape for, for both situ for both sides. We didn't we didn't have Cardi come out, you know, start crashing on on Meg. They continued to work up until this year, sharing the stage. Now, I know Nicki Minaj is going to have some fans out there. Y'all niggas don't like me. Y'all niggas don't really fuck with me anyway. So it, it shouldn't it doesn't fucking matter. But. Y'all going to defend y'all going to say, oh, you're, you're going to make a million excuses for Megan and Cardi. I don't know how clearly I can say it. I go off of my own thought process. If I agree with something, I agree. If I disagree with something, I disagree. If you have an issue with that, look yourself in the mirror and ask why. Okay. Let me know what y'all think of all this down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. And look out for that Megan and Glow project. Well, hey, I don't know. Are we going to get that sometime this year or is it next year? I don't give a fuck. Whenever y'all want to do it, have fun. I'll be here to check it out. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Peace. King of my city in cul de sac. Come and I swing like soldier rag. Leading my people like quarterback. Why I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Spinning the block for the Gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. I was ready for years and they doubted me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross my mind, I came back with some battery. Stand for my honor, but you run no corner. Packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble. I done came too far to be.